Hey everybody, I'm Sam Webb, and this is part eight of my Shopify theme build series. Today, we'll be building a simple cart page. So let's get started. Now where we left off last time was setting up this, uh, this product page here, and we have this add to cart, and when you click it, it adds the product to cart, and it takes you to the cart page. But as you can see, we haven't set anything up for the cart page, so although the items are in your cart, you just can't see them. So we're gonna change that today. Similar to other features we've built, we're going to need a few pieces of Shopify documentation. First, we'll need the cart object, which is the object associated with the cart page automatically. And if you look at the things that are covered on this page, you'll see that we have a cart.items value. And that value returns a list of cart items, also known as line items. And so the second piece of documentation we're gonna need is line item documentation. And this object contains all of the information associated with a particular line item. So this is similar to other pages, right? We get the documentation that's associated with that page or that's associated with whatever we wanna build on that page. And we just keep these open so that we can refer back to them when we need to. The last piece of documentation isn't an object, but it's the actual documentation about the cart page. Uh, there are some things that are specific to the cart page and we're gonna want this documentation open just so we can easily refer to some of those things as well. So the first thing in here is we've got the template that we need to use is called cart.liquid. If we go over to our code, you'll see that in templates we already have a cart.liquid file and I have that file open. Also, since I know that I'm gonna use a separate file to, to contain the HTML for line items, I've created a snippet called line item. So to start out, let's add a little HTML. And so if we go back to that cart.liquid documentation and we scroll down, we'll see right here that we've got this form. And it's a pretty simple form. It's just a form that submits back to the cart page uh, and it's a post method. And you see they've got this abbreviated code here where you'd be looping over the cart items and then after that you would have a submit button. Now in this case I've already written all this code and so instead of going through and writing every line of it, I'm just going to paste it in and I'm going to explain what's happening. So we start out with that same form that we just saw in the documentation. It's got the action that, that submits the cart and it's got a post. And then we just gave it a class uh, just for our own styling purposes. And then down here, I've got this div that has this, that same loop, right? It's looping over cart items. And then we've got this line item snippet, which is currently, which is currently empty. And it takes in uh, the line item. So that's going to list out all of our line items. And then down here, we have the total right here, which just shows the total price. And then we've also got two buttons, right? One button for updating the quantity and one button for checking out. And as you can see, both of these buttons are submit buttons. The only difference is the one for updating quantities doesn't have a name associated with it. And the one that is supposed to take you to checkout does have a name and the name is checkout. So if I go to the front end and I refresh the page, we're not gonna see the line items because again, that line item file is empty, but we will see the update quantities button, checkout button, and that total price. So now let's get the line items displayed. So in the line item file, similar to the other file, I'm just gonna paste in all this code and then I'll walk you through it. And so I've got this split up into kind of the left side and the right side of the line item. So if we look at the left side, that's where uh, pretty much all of the information about the product will be. So first we've got the image and we can pull that using line item.image similar to how we can pull an image uh, from sections, how we used before, or how we would pull the featured image from a product, something that we used before. So it's, it's the same thing, this just, it's called image on the line item. And then down here for the title, we're using line item.product.title. And so the line item keeps a reference to the product and the variant that uh, added it to cart. And so when we, when we do line item.product, this product is the actual product object. And then we could go back to the product documentation and use anything from, from that documentation. In this case, we're using the title. Uh, next, we're looping over the line items uh, options and we're using options with values here. And what this will return, or what options with values is, it's a list 
of all of the uh, option and value uh, connections, those key value pairs. So right, it would be you know the name size and the size of the item of medium, right? So the option would be size and the value would be medium. And so uh, we loop over that and it gives us an option object, which then we can pull option.name and use that and then option.value. So then down here, we've got uh, line item dot final line price. And that's the price of all of the items, like the entire quantity of that. So uh, say that you, you have an item in your cart and it's $30 and you have two of those items, then you know this price would be 60 instead of you know that 30. And then finally on this left side, we have uh, this input here. And so let me go back to the documentation. And this is the documentation on updating quantities. So on the line item, we're gonna want to put uh, this input here, which the important things here are the name, and the name should be updates with the square brackets after it. And then the value needs to, you want that to show whatever the current quantity is. And then there's a second thing that's needed. Uh, we need a button for updating the quantity. And this, and, uh, this, this uses the input as the button, you're also able to use the button tag, which is what I'm using on the site. So back to the code, looking at it, we have that name updates, and then we have that value, which is line item dot quantity. If I close the left side and open up the right, now in here we've got the remove button, and this requires uh, this specific href here. So slash cart slash change with a question mark, and then line equals and this is going to be whatever the line number is. So usually you'd be looping over with a for loop and it would show the index. Now, since we're inside of this, uh, this snippet, this for loop that index won't work properly. And we'll get to that in a minute. But then we also want to pass in the quantity of zero, which will remove it from the cart. So what we're doing is we're updating the quantity of a specific line item to be zero, which means it's removed from the cart. Now, the fix for this, we're going to go back out to cart.liquid and we're going to add index equals for loop that index. Right? Because uh, this file is where the for loop is happening, not within this file. And so I just want to make sure we have that index. We'll update the comment as well as add that in here. And there's documentation for this as well. So let me show you that. If we scroll up a little bit, it's right here. Shopify is omitting, you know, the actual line item code here, but but in your line item code, you would add this anchor tag with the uh, you know, with this specific information and then clicking that will remove that item from your cart. So now let's have a look at the cart and let's test it. If I refresh the page, now you see that we've added all that and I've gone through beforehand and added a bunch of styles to this just so I don't have to do that during this video. So as you can see, here's the product we just added a little right at the beginning of the video, this Heather Girlfriend Material Crop Sweatshirt. And let's, let's look at updating the quantity. So let's update that to three and then hit update quantities. And as you can see, the, it refreshed the page and it reloaded with quantity set to three and at the price at 117 for three of those. So we know quantity works. Now we need to test the remove button. So let's click on that. And now that's gone. Price is updated, the, the item's gone here. So now we know the remove button works. And finally, we need to click this checkout button and make sure it goes to checkout. And I'm looking up top and I can see uh, we've got some inventory issues. So uh, we don't have enough inventory for this product. So let's go back and remove that. And now if I go to checkout, it takes me to checkout. And in completing that cart page, we've really completed uh, what you would need to build a very simple Shopify site. Now there are a lot of things that you can add to this and change. Uh, one of the things that comes to mind would be uh, adding in customer accounts and building out those pages, but that would be the same process as building out any other page we've built. You'd figure out which page you're going to build. You look at the documentation for the object that is specifically you know, associated with that page. And if it's a specific type of page, like the login and register page, uh, you might want to look at the, the liquid template documentation for that page. 
And by using the same skills that we've gone over in all these videos, you'd be able to build that page out. And with that, I think I'm going to bring this series to a close. Uh, we've accomplished the goal of building out an entire site from scratch. It's a very basic and simple site, but it's a good starting point. Now this by no means is the end of me working on this site and making changes to it and making videos about that. Those videos just won't be a part of this series. So I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you next time.